You know, Tommy, it doesn't get much better than this. Taking an old, well, new to us truck off-road for the first time. And as you can tell, it's only been about two days since we bought that 2006 Land Rover LR3 in Buckingham Blue. And here we are in the Colorado mountains and we're gonna see if we bought an off-roader or a poser. I'm gonna surprise you with something and you're not gonna like the surprise. We're driving to buy a new car. We're in the Disco 2 and I think it's time we replace this. Is it an LR3? It's an LR3. Um, this is like, I, this is my favorite vehicle I've ever owned actually. Really? Tommy, let's run uh, St. John's. It's kind of a moderately difficult trail that leads to a really cool ghost town slash mine that we get to. It also then pops up above treeline, giving a spectacular view of the Colorado Rockies in the fall. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Now, Tommy, you know this, this is a Land Rover three or disco three and there are five generations and i think the sweet spot for these trucks is either the first generation or the third generation you know the first one was just really cool out of the box it was the right size it had the right off-road gear it was really unique the second generation which we of course own and you know this better than i do is just a one catastrophic failure away from being junkyard ready uh, the third one which we're going to test out today feels a little heavy, I gotta tell you, it feels like a truck. Uh, the fourth generation is cool, but it's got a lot more electronics and a lot more things that can go wrong with it. And the current generation, well, you know, that thing went from being kind of square jawed and rough and tough looking to being kind of a big jelly belly. And I gotta tell you, I'm not a big fan of the design. But you know what's crazy? Over all those five generations, the company was actually owned first by itself then it got purchased by BMW, yep. who then offloaded it to Ford, yep. who then sold it to Tata. Yep. And now, of course, it's been Indian owned, you know, for the last 10 years or so. So these different generations of discoveries kind of tell the story of Land Rover as a company. We paid $7,000 for this truck, which I thought was a fair price. Now, it doesn't have the coveted HD or heavy duty kit, which gets you a locking rear diff and a full size spare, but what it does have is much cooler. First, it has this official Land Rover push bar. Then, of course, that Land Rover snorkel behind me. There's a ladder on the back. It's got a, about a two and a half inch lift. It's got the off-road tires. And let's face it, it just looks badass. And when you're making videos, the truck has to look the part. Now the question is, can it play the part? We're getting into uh, the trailhead here. So what do you say we shift it in neutral before it gets a little too steep? Okay. Put it in a neutral and uh, shift it into low mode. And all I do is hit this little low rain selected. All right, mud and ruts. Put it into drive. Uh, and it, wow, it really changes the throttle response. So let's, uh, let's zip up the trail here and uh, let's see how this thing does. So I've been thinking about the name of this truck, Tommy, and I gotta tell you, the coolest thing about this is the air suspension and every time you like lowers, it snorts, it goes really loud, almost like a Jake brake. Okay. So how about if we call it Rhino? Big snorting beast brute of an off-roader. Yeah, I like it, it's a good you like name. it? All right, Rhino it is. The Land Rover Discovery 3 or LR3, if you're here in the US, is in my opinion, the single most important Land Rover ever because it started a whole new era for Land Rover. And this is one of the most important aspects of this entire vehicle. First car ever with terrain response, which is now such a common thing in every other car, but you can dial in exactly what kind of terrain you're driving over, plus air suspension as standard and a tie low transfer case. But there's a lot of other firsts that this Discovery had as well. This Discovery was the first all new model since 1989. That's right, and it's got four corner air suspension, 
four corner independent suspension and something called an IBF or integrated body frame. So it's a combination of unibody and body on frame construction plus it has an all new engine. It was just an entirely dramatic change for the Land Rover lineup. You know, Tommy, I've been saying this wrong. It's Saints, John. If you guys want to run this trail, it's really easy to get to. Go up I-70 from Denver, pull into Keystone, Colorado, going over Loveland Pass. Once you get to Keystone, head to the town of Montezuma. Once you're in Montezuma, past the first stop sign, you'll see a sign. Saints, John, hang a right, and you'll be right where we are. All right, here's my initial observations off-roading. Rhino is big, Rhino is heavy, and you can feel the mass, especially going down, but Rhino is competent. What's crazy is in this mud and ruts mode, throttle response is really tame. So in other words, I have to push the pedal probably halfway down before I actually start moving. You know the other great thing about this, Tommy? It's got a really super comfy ride. Yeah, so Land Rover did something um, called a cross-linked air suspension yep. on this Discovery, which means essentially they join the corners together via a tube. And what that means is it gives you a lot of articulation, and it also gives you a really good ride on the road and off-road. They use something called ACE, or active um, cornering enhancement. Well, that's what it would have been called in Discovery 2. Here's your top tip, at least from me. If you're looking for a used Land Rover, make sure that the guy you bought it from really took care of it, and the guy we bought it from was meticulous. Plus, he really did a great job upgrading it. A couple other things that he added to this are these really cool auxiliary beam headlights, and at night, they are super powerful. Plus, we've got these headlight guards, which I think just make the truck look so much more off-road worthy. Back here, he added four really cool things. First, this ladder, then this auxiliary backup light, which just floods the rear of the truck with light when you're backing up. Of course, here we have a hitch with, under this piece of plastic, an integrated brake controller set up. And coolest of all, and Tommy, you noticed this first, right? In America, this was not a Discovery 3. This was an LR3, but look, Discovery 3. You know, this guy loved his truck so much so that he went with the European name for it and not with the American name. The coolest part of the LR3 in my opinion has to be the air suspension and this one still has it and more importantly it still works. But the question is, how do you lift a vehicle with air suspension? Well you have to use something called Johnson rods or in this case they're made by a company called Rhino and basically what it is are these little two and a half inch rods that trick the suspension into thinking it's always lower than it is. So it sits about two and a half inches taller which means you can fit these oversized tires. Now these are Nitto Terra Grappler G2s are about a 32, 33 inch tall tire mounted on the stock 18 inch wheels. They're in pretty good shape. They probably have about 60, 70% of tread left. Uh, never tried them off road before. We'll probably air them down and see how they do. So let's face it, Tommy. Uh, this is a pretty moderate trail, right? Yeah, pretty mild. So my, my take on Rhino here is it's probably got the smoothest ride of any off-road that we have, except for the Land Cruiser. Now this, of course, would completely and utterly competed with the Land Cruiser yeah. at the time. So I want to get both of them out here and see how they compare. But I was a little worried about the fact that we didn't get the locking rear diff. Uh, but so far, the system really seems to be working well. And it's figuring it out. Another great thing about the LA3 is that they went away from the Rover V8 that dates back to like 1961 from an old Buick. Instead, you get this, it's a 4.4 liter AJ V8 is the internal code, but it's out of a Jaguar, develops 300 horsepower and 315 pound-feet of torque. And let me tell you what, that is just barely adequate for this vehicle because it weighs 5,600 pounds. There was also a four liter V6 out of the Ford Explorer. Oh God, no. What? <laughs> Not the V6. Why not? It was a 220-ish horsepower. Yeah, well, how much better fuel economy did it get? One, so better. We're getting 14, Tommy. What did that get? 15? Yeah, you get 15, and you would really struggle up the hills. All right, let's face it, Tommy. You're the better off-roader in the family, so you get to get the next deep and deep part. Okay. There you go. Take it. I'll switch. Give me the camera. Here's 
we've got a very steep set of switchbacks here. Now, like my dad said, this doesn't have the HD off-road packs. We don't have that rear locker that would automatically actuate. We just have well, a pretty advanced traction control system, like a brake force distribution, and it's really effective. So even though that this isn't by far the most off-road worthy one out there, it's pretty good. Plus we even have a front bash plate. We have some protection over the fuel tanks as well. So in theory, this discovery is ready to go. Uh, I'm going over some pretty rough rocks and yes, it's a little bouncy, but it's so much smoother than a solid axle. When you put it into the off-road setting, it actually allows a lot of articulation. Land Rover wanted this air suspension to mimic the articulation of a solid axle. Oh, cooler girl fell off. Yeah, the tape it comes with this is very good. This vehicle, this is its element. You know, trail running, moderate trails where you have to cover a huge amount of distance. That's where the Discovery shines. It's not meant to be a rock basher or a rock buggy. It's just meant to take moderate trails like this with absolute comfort and ease. Tommy, almost 12,000 feet above sea level. That is exactly where our brand new Rhino has taken us. And what's the next video? Well, we're gonna have to do the obvious comparison. See what Rhino does compared to the Land Cruiser. That's right, LR3 versus Land Cruiser. That's coming up next, but as always, this has been Tommy. Go back to tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world overlanding reviews. So did we spend $7,000 on a good, bad, or so-so vehicle? I'm gonna do two thumbs up. I'm gonna go three, actually, I'm gonna go four thumbs up. <laughs> I really love Rhino. See you guys next time, ciao.